Well, this is going to be a quick little video, and I know you're thinking, wow, you do nothing quick. All you do is repeat yourself and flap your lips. Uh, <laughs> um, I just want to do this as a primer to a point of discussion. There is not a trick in this box. This is a dead serious video. There are empirical constituents to beauty and what is defined as beauty. This has been proven ages ago, or recently uh, scientists have proven it with babies that don't have any preconceptions about you know, who's pretty and what's pretty. As so far as the, the definition of symmetry, I know you know about the rule of thirds. Um, I don't know how much you know about the golden ratio, the golden section. Most people know nothing about it. I could, if I had the time and the energy, I could probably write a hundred books on the golden ratio itself. I actually have a huge discovery I made in the Plato's Republic 509D to 511 tattooed on my hand permanently. It's 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, which isn't a number, but it's an expression. And it's a hidden Pythagorean, uh, uh, basically an equation. It's not a number. You would think, well, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3 is 4.23606, etc., etc., etc. It's not. It's an expression. The, the premise of the golden ratio, nobody understands it. They'll say, oh, well, that's the golden ratio in nature. Um, you know, it's pretty, and it's a spiral, or it's a this or that, but this is not what the ancient Greek Platonists were interested in. How is this applicable to photography? You can apply it so simply to photography that if you're able to recognize it in your composition, or you can crop it later in Photoshop, and you can make it that way, cropping it in post, although there are certain constituents in foreground and background that you can't crop, I mean, you can't actually introduce, you know, subject to... Uh, Subject, object, foreground, background variations in post-production, you, you can uh, crop it properly, but the rest of it has to be taken at the time the photograph is, uh, or the image is created. But the reason the Greeks were so interested in this is that everything in nature from macro to micro is defined from the very premise of that which we define as beautiful and as the, the logos of the cosmos ethos and the cosmos nithos is the golden section. But what is the golden section of the golden ratio? People have a little two-second blurb inside their brain and they think of uh, spirals and vortexes and other things that define empirical beauty that uh, follows a logarithmic of the Fibonacci sequence, but they have no idea what the golden ratio is implicitly. They have a connotative comprehension of what the definition is, but they have no denotative understanding of what the golden section of the golden ratio is and as far as what it is denotatively, implicitly, implicative of as far as the extrapolation of what we find as beautiful or the definition of empirical beauty in nature. And to put it very, very simply, and this is basically ancient Greek intellectual pornography, to be very funny in a very odd sense, is that the comprehension that what which we find to be empirical beauty in nature is nothing other than an extrapolation of one in multiplicatives. Uh, I.e. the golden ratio gold section in the Fibonacci sequence of 1, 1, 2, 3, 5 begins off with 1 and 1. So we're talking about the multiplicative extrapolation of the number 1 or the principle, the principle and the attribute both being 1. Just as light is indifferentiated from illumination, you can't talk about light without talking about illumination, you can't talk about illumination without talking about light. By the way, the ancient Pali and the ancient Greek term for ignorance is the exact same term for illumination. Desire, ignorance, and illumination are ultimately all the same thing. How is this implicit to the golden section of the golden ratio? Well, it would take about a thousand videos, which I could easily do, but nobody would watch them because they'd, they'd want to shoot themselves out of boredom because nobody has any intellectual curiosity anymore. Everybody only cares about how they can get laid or how they can get paid. I mean, so far as, uh, you know, uh, the, the bliss that comes from uh, true comprehension and wisdom, I mean, that is just like an alien notion to humanity. But as so far as recognizing your photographs, we'll be talking about it later, but you can start thinking about it as so far as so we can talk about what is in this box. And here's one example. It is extrapolative one in expression attributively. And what this means is that which will be defined as beauty in nature and in photographic composition and in foreground background composition and subject and object composition follows a logarithmic, not a log logarithmic spiral, which is what this is. This is actually just a center section out of, an, out of a nautilus shell. What we find is an extrapolative expression of logarithmic um, 
uh, logarithmic manifestation of one in uh, in multiplicity. So one, one, two, three, five, eight. So what we're looking at, as far as what we define as empirical beauty in nature, both in subject matter, composition, subject, object, how we uh, crop the shot, is an expression that is hardwired into the human consciousness or the will. Unfortunately, we don't have any differentiation in English like they did back then in differentiating consciousness, which is empirical, uh, from that of the will or the nous, which of course there is no Greek translation. Um, but that which is hardwired into uh, the will or the mind, i.e. the spirit, of, uh, of human uh, aesthetics in comprehending what is or what defines beauty. And uh, it is nothing other than saying that we recognize one in extrapolation and we subliminally recognize it as the aesthetics of what is and that which defines beauty. Both composition, crop, subject, object, foreground, background, um, when you actually have all of these things lined up, then you have multiplicative uh, uh, expression of photographic beauty. If we talk about this later, how much someone is actually interested in it, I have no idea. Probably not, not too many people are interested in it at all, but uh, you know, the ancient Greek Pythagoreans and the Platonists who gave us 90% of our current day understanding of logic, you know, live long and prosper, <laughs> modern day understanding of logic, is based upon uh, Pythagorean and Platonic concepts of the comprehension of cosmic mechanics. And like I said, uh, humorously, um, the one thing uh, that, uh, that the Greeks were so infamous, infamously interested in the golden section, the golden ratio, was uh, for the understanding by using retroductive methodology so far as thinking and comprehension and working the way backwards, um, was understanding what the golden ratio is, what its connotation is, what its denotation is, because ultimately you're talking about an inseparable, co-eternal principle slash attribute. And uh, there is nothing in the world that exists without attribute, and uh, the one in extrapolation, what the one is and what the one does, are both one and the same thing, and they're inseparable, just as there's no such thing in nature as a line or a point. There's only a point line, just as there's no such thing as a straight line in nature. There is not one single straight line in the entire cosmos. There are unfathomably long ones that might appear straight, but there are no straight lines in the universe. They do not exist. So, Anyway, let me tell you about this later. I doubt there's very much interest in it, but start thinking about the golden ratio and maybe investigate it into your photographic uh, composition. Just do a little research on your own, since if I were to talk about it at great length, it might bore the tears out of you or might uh, make you want to jump off a cliff. <laughs> Catch you later.